Hi folks, Charlie Shelton, Zippity Doodad here at Knott's Berry Farm. We are back for the Boysenberry Festival. It starts today, March 8th, and runs through the end of April. Last week I was here at the preview taste test event, so I got to taste several of those of the items that are available here today. I'm not gonna be going through those again, so if you haven't seen those reviews, I will link that video uh, right over here and you can go and take a look at it. But everything else that I haven't seen is now out and available. We are gonna go through all of Ghost Town and try everything that we have. We've got our tasting cards and we are ready to go. Let's dive in. Okay, so first stop here at the Boysenberry Festival. We went and got our tasting cards. So this comes with uh, six tastings of different items from the festival um, for $55. They are a little bit smaller than the full-size ones. So there's one price for if you're buying them full-size and one price or, or I guess one option for the tasting card. So I went ahead and redeemed two of them already because it is 11 a.m., so it is time for a beer. So first up, we have the Boysenberry Shortbread Cookie Ale. This is brewed by Angel City, and it's a new beer this year. They usually just have the Hefeweizen that they've had forever, uh, which I think is done by Golden Road. But this, now they've expanded their offerings and they have a bunch of different local breweries doing uh, different beers for them. This, of course, is uh, based on those little boysenberry shortbread cookies in the package. Uh, it's supposed to taste like that, so let's give it a shot. Hmm, that's more sour than I would expect. Um, it's okay, it's very similar. I guess it is a little more bready than even the wheat beer. Um, but it's it's not, like it's just tartness. It's not really like that sweet, fruity boysenberry. It's more just a tartness that comes into the ale. I mean, it's not bad by any stretch, but it's not as good, I think, as the boysenberry wheat beer, which has been here forever, and the IPA, which I kind of, is at the preview event. So if you haven't seen that, uh, I'll link that in here. You can go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, the IPA started out not quite boysenberry enough, but it slowly built, and so I, I ended up really enjoying it. But with this, I really could do a full pint. If you buy it, you know, the full size, it's a 16-ounce pour, and on the tasting card, it's a 12-ounce pour. So, you know, not bad, and it'll keep me going all day. There's a lot of beers and foods and stuff to try here, so. Next up is the Cucumber and Boysenberry Lemonade. Uh, can you hand me the lemonade, please? This one was for my son. This is the only non-alcoholic version. He's already started it, but. Oh, that's nice. Wow. That's really nice and light. Pretty sour. Pretty sour? Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I can try it. You want to try it? Let me. Once you take a big sip, mm -hmm. it, it start, starts to be sour. So yeah. Sour, it will burn your Oh, it's so sour, it'll burn your lips. It's not that sour. It's a little sour. The lemon kind of takes the edge off from the sweetness. That boysenberry punch flavor is really, really sweet. So that the lemon from the lemonade takes that uh, sweetness down just a touch. And it's also not full boysenberry punch. It's just kind of boysenberry flavored lemonade. So it's much more palatable. The cucumber is nice and light and refreshing. Uh, we're sitting here in early March and it's already starting to get warm. I can feel it on the back of my neck. It's pretty warm. Uh, this is going to be great as the festival wears on and we have these really hot days. This is going to be a favorite treat. So I really enjoyed that. Thank you for sharing. All right, let's move on to the next. And next up, we are here at Miner's Mac and Spuds across from Ghost Rider because we are trying the potato and corn chowder with boysenberry crostini and boysenberry drizzle. This is like a, uh, a thick stew or a soup with big chunks of potato. This is great. Let's. Like giant, pieces of giant pieces of potato. To like, to like match the whole building yeah. Up. Yeah. All right. Let's give this a shot. Oh. Okay. So if you've seen the preview video, I tried several items from the Boysenberry Festival already. I was a little let down in the boysenberry department because while they're great foods, the boysenberry isn't really coming through very strong. And at the boysenberry festival, that's what I want. I want to be smacked in the face with a boysenberry. This one, 
probably wouldn't have been super heavy on the boysenberry if not for the boysenberry drizzle because it's not really mixed in. So the boysenberry drizzle really brings a pop of sweetness, a pop of tartness to this otherwise heavy, creamy chowder. It's just like it's a great chowder on its own. And I'm going to eat this entire bowl because this is spectacular food. Like not just in a theme park. Like, like remember we're in a theme park and we're still getting such amazing food. This is, it just blows my mind. All right, let's try this. Huh. Okay. Okay. This is not great on its own. Whereas the corn chowder is great, adding the boysenberry makes it thematic and fun. This is not spectacular. I'm not really a fan of that. It is very boysenberry forward, like sweet and fruity forward, but it's just kind of stale and chewy. It's not like when I think crustini, I think like a nice crunch. This is more just a sag. So that's not spectacular, but I don't fault him for it because the soup is just so good. Oh, there's giant chunks of potatoes. There's corn throughout and then green onions on top. It's this is just fantastic. And the boysenberry, even though it's only a drizzle on top, it is mixing all the way through. So I'm enjoying this a lot. All right, next up from Miner's Mac and Spuds. So all over the park, you can get this very cool boysenberry sipper. I can't believe that this is the first time they've ever made this. This is like the simplest, easiest idea, but it's so perfect and it so fits. And like, I don't usually go in for sippers. I don't care, but this one's an actual real cup. It's not little tiny. It's like a real full size cup that has a, a straw and everything. And like, it, I'm, I could actually use this at home for something. So it's not just an impulse theme park purchase. The reason I got it at Miner's Mac and Spuds is because this is the only location in the park where you can get the sipper with a berry mango smoothie. This is something they sell on the menu as well, but it's a $10 upgrade to get it in the sipper, and I think that is well worth it because this is super fun. Anywhere else in the park that you're gonna get this sipper, it'll come with an icy, and the boysenberry icy is fine, but this is actually a festival food, so let's give it a shot. Okay. It's sweet, it's slushy, it's very cold, it's very fun. And I'm, I'm not hating this. It's not the greatest thing I've ever had, but you know, for a sweet treat, it's not bad. Um, you know, if, if you're in the mood for like a, a sweet slushy thing and you want this instead of an icy, it's very similar in texture and feel. So this is actually really nice. And you get this super cute little boysenberry cup. So I'm happy, I'm sitting pretty. Mm. All right, let's move on to the next. Okay, here we are at Ghost Town Bakery, and we have a couple of sweet treats. We're gonna start off with the boysenberry bunt cake. So there's no real menu descriptions on this or anything, but it's just a little bunt cake. In my years doing food reviews for another channel uh, at Disneyland, I did this same kind of a bunt cake over and over again for Halloween, for Christmas, for all, all different things. So I'm very familiar with this style of thing. It's always a, boysen, a cake with some filling in the middle, but this time it's boysenberry, so I'm really looking forward to it. Hmm. That's really nice. There is filling. I'll show you here what that looks like. So there is a filling inside the little cake here of the frosting filling in the middle area. It's boysenberry, but like delicately boysenberry. It's really, the fruitiness comes through and it's already sweet because it's a cake, but it's not overpowering. I know I said I wanted to be hit in the face with a boysenberry, but like this is kind of that nice middle of the road where it's like a, a delicately fruit flavored cake, but not discernibly boysenberry. Oh. Every time. Ma'am. I just spill all the time. That's nice. I, you know, if that was going to be like my treat for, um, for right now, I would be really pleasantly uh, surprised by this. This is better than I thought it was going to be. It would pair really nicely with a cup of coffee that uh, they also have here at the Ghost Town Bakery or the boysenberry coffee specifically would be really nice. 
but I have a lot of other sweet treats to do. So, let's move on to the boysenberry and chocolate stuffed cookie. This thing is massive. It is a hunk of a cookie. I can feel like the weight of it. You know, I, they say it's filled, so I know it is, but like, let's look here. Is that filled? Oh, I guess it's like just in chunks, like filled in chunks. There's a little bit of um, berry here and a big old chocolate piece here. I see the boysenberry coming out the edge on the side. Let's try it. Whoa. Um, wow. That is dense. Um, so the flavor is nice. The boysenberry comes through very nicely. It's very chocolatey. The flavor is incredible. But it's got the texture of like a power bar. Like it's, it's like sticky and sticking to my teeth. It's hard to chew almost because it's just so dense and so much. The flavors are great though. So, I mean, if you want an energy bar that's mostly sugar and fruit, this is it. <clears throat> it's really an enjoyable taste, but not the greatest eating experience. So, yeah, I think I'll save that one for later. Like a little bit goes a long way on that. All right, let's move on. So in addition to all of the great food and the rides that are always here at the Boysenberry Festival, uh, we also have a spectacular selection of merch, and this year even more so. They have all kinds of stuff. Let's go take a look. I think this is my new look. Get rid of the old hat. Okay, we are here at the Wilderness Dance Hall out on the Wilderness Patio Bar because they have a selection of beers and things here. I think what I'd like to start with is the boysenberry sangria with an orange slice. Let's try it. It's, it's a fine sangria, but I don't get a whole lot of um, boysenberry from it. Like it's it's fine, and boys and or uh, sangria is kind of nice in this growing heat of the day. The sangria is really nice, but it doesn't get a lot of boysenberry. Whereas a lot of the other you know cocktails, things where like because sangria is just like adding wine and boysenberry and all this stuff. So when you add it intentionally, uh, it seems like it's a bit of a stronger flavor. This one is coming out a little bit lighter, so. So I had to switch cameras here as I was talking about the heat of the day and enjoying my sangria and my camera overheated, so we're not on a camera now. Uh, next up we have the Boysenberry Blonde. This is by Golden Road Brewing out of uh, Glendale. This one I guess they've had, they had last year they debuted, uh, but it's back this year. I didn't try it last year. I, I'm familiar with the half. I tried the IPA at the tasting event and then we had the Boysenberry Cookie one earlier, but uh, this blonde is new. Let's try it. Huh. That's nice. It's very similar to the boysenberry wheat beer, where it's got that little bit of tartness, but also some fruity notes. But this is a little more um, bitter. It's a little more bitter because it's a blonde and not not a uh, heavyweizen a wheat beer. It's it's got a little bit of that um, the the hoppy, not quite like an IPA, not that far, not as floral, 
but just that little bit of bitter as though it's on the way to being an IPA. Um, that's really nice. This is middle of the road. So if you're usually an IPA drinker and you want to step out and try something a little new, a little thematic and a little fun, this is where it's at. Boysenberry. Boysenberry Blonde. Alrighty, let's, I think we have one more food. We have one more food here. All right, next up at the Wilderness Patio Bar, we've got the pork loin slices over mashed potatoes with creamy boysenberry mustard sauce. Now, this is one of the things that I haven't had yet that I'm most excited for is honestly just the creamy boysenberry mustard sauce like that. Yeah. That sounds awesome. So I am gonna try that just by itself first. Oh, that's fantastic. Not super creamy, but um, definitely mustard forward, like a stone ground mustard. You know, it's, it's got chunks in it. It's almost like a, like a brown mustard, so it's got a little spice to it. Let's try that with the pork. Let's see. All right. All right, I got my piece here. Let's give it a shot. Get out of here. Oh. It's a very simple pork loin. Very simple. Not a lot going on with the pork loin. But it works so well with that must boysenberry mustard sauce. The sweet, the spicy, the tangy. Oh man. That's great. I still I don't think I I don't think it's the best of the festival, but it has to be like number two position. That's amazing. And then the mashed potatoes, I think, are just normal. Yeah, just normal mashed potatoes, but that sauce still brings a really fun character. And there's green onions on this, which I've noticed several times throughout the festival. The green onions bring that pop of, of brightness and uh, not quite acidity, but that oniony flavor uh, that you need to kind of reinforce the savory because there's so much sweet with the boysenberry. You really need to pile on those notes of, of savory and onion and garlic to really drive it home that that's what you're having. That's that's fantastic. I loved that. Um, I would eat that whole thing. And next door to the Wilderness Patio Bar is the actual Wilderness Dance Hall. So this is an inside space. They've got tons of beers and all kinds of stuff. Um, this is usually where they would do the beer and wine tasting. So now they're also doing food service here. So we've got the boysenberry and Parmesan polenta with roasted veggies and balsamic drizzle. And I gotta say, it doesn't look super appetizing. It kind of looks like gruel, um, you know, but that's, I guess, what polenta is. Like, it's just not a very appetizing looking dish. It's just kind of looks like porridge or gruel, um, but I know the flavor of it is gonna be great. No, not really. Um, hmm. It's fine, the balsamic definitely helps. The balsamic helps a lot. But the polenta is kind of, kind of like gruel or, or, you know, grits, but without the butter. Um, yeah, that's a little underwhelming. It's sweet. It's not necessarily boysenberry forward, but like there's a little fruit something going on. Um, you know, if it wasn't on a tasting card, I'd probably be a little disappointed in my purchase, but like on the tasting card, it's part of it. It's whatever. It's fine, and it's, it's just not one of my favorites, especially coming right after the pork line, which was like <clears throat> simple but really well done. This one is simple and just kind of bland, so. That's, that's what it is. Okay, so also in Wilderness Dance Hall, and this is what I've been looking for. I saw this at the preview event, but I hadn't seen it anywhere else throughout the park. They do flights. The boysenberry beers and cocktails and all this stuff, you know, I don't necessarily need a full glass of the beer to kind of ascertain whether I like it or not. So having the flight, which is just the price of, of uh, slightly over the price of two beers, um, this flight, you can mix and match and pick and choose what sounds interesting to you. 
So like, I don't, I'm not gonna drink an entire espresso martini. I don't particularly go for espresso martinis. Um, but I've seen a lot of people carrying them around. I've heard a lot of great things about it. So I feel like I should try it just to, you know, cover all my bases. So this way I can try a little bit of it and not have to commit to an entire thing and spend one of my, my uh, tickets on it. So I got a flight here. It is mix and match, so I got to pick and choose and there's a bunch of different options. I chose the Tropical Boysenberry IPA, which is different than the IPA I had at the tasting event. I went for the boysenberry espresso martini with lavender sprinkles, the boysenberry hurricane, and then just a, a beer that's not boysenberry. It is a uh, from Garage Brewing. This is a prickly pear Hefeweizen. I don't know if you can tell, I love Arizona. So anything that is uh, prickly pear is up my alley. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna leave that one probably to last and just go through all the boysenberry stuff first. Let's start with the tropical IPA. So much better than the other IPA. This is by Brewery X. This is a, a tropical brewery, or a, a tropical IPA by Brewery X. The other tropical IPA that I, or the other boysenberry IPA that I had was by Carl Strauss. I usually really like Carl Strauss, and it's nothing against him. It was a fine IPA, but it didn't really work. The tropical notes and the hops of this one from Brewery X lend itself more to that boysenberry influence. So as you can see, it's very boysenberry colored and very boysenberry dark. This is just, this is a fantastic beer. And in the same way, you can have a good wheat beer and then adding boysenberry only makes it better. This is just a good tropical IPA and then adding to it only makes it that much better. Uh, let's move on to the espresso martini. As I mentioned, I'm not a huge fan of the espresso martini. Also, I would not expect an espresso martini to have ice in it. Um, there's a few mixologists out there, I'm sure, giving it the side eye right now. But, you know, we'll see how it is. I don't get any boysenberry from it, but um, it's more pleasant than I was expecting, at least. It's very vodka forward. The coffee is at least good. And these lavender sprinkles really set it off. That kind of gives it that floral fun care. Oh, I see, it's got a boysenberry rim. That's where the boysenberry is from. That's what it is. It's not actually in the cocktail. It's on the rim. Yeah, okay. It works well enough together. Um, generally for an espresso martini, I think more creamy than this. Um, this is more like uh, coffee with vodka in it, which is fine. Um, but as I said, not really for me. But what is really for me is this hurricane. Uh, many a forgotten days have I spent at Blue Bayou in Disneyland drinking their house hurricane. I love a good hurricane. So a boysenberry hurricane can be just that much better. Let's give it a shot. Huh. It may be because I've taken a moment to sit and photograph it and everything and eat my other dishes. Um, but it seems really watered down. It tastes like watered down orange juice almost. But like the espresso martini has the same amount of ice and that doesn't taste watered down. Like there's a little bit of water, but it's not overly so. It doesn't taste diluted. This actually tastes diluted. Yeah, there's just not, it kind of tastes like half, half orange juice, half water. Like there's not enough in there to really get many notes beyond that other than just generic fruit flavor. Um, I know I wasn't looking forward to the espresso martini, but the hurricane is actually the lesser of the two cocktails, which is too bad. Uh, Cause that's the one I was looking forward to the most. Let's move on to the Garage X Prickly Pear Hefeweizen. I am looking forward to this a lot. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fun. It's prickly pear, but it's not overly so. Whereas the, the boysenberry, I really want to stand out. I don't really want to be, you know, bludgeoned to death with a prickly pear right now because I'm at the boysenberry festival, whatever. But like having just that little bit, this is kind of year round because we're not at the prickly pear festival. 
I just want a little, a little hint of that prickly pear, and this is perfect. This is right on the money. Mm. Wow, that is great. It's more sour, again, <coughs> more sour than I think I was expecting, but it works with this Hefeweizen because the Hefeweizen is already like, you know, bready and almost borderline sweet being a wheat beer. It's almost borderline sweet, so it can handle that little touch of sour from the prickly pear, um, but it's not all the way to like a sour beer. That one's really good. However, as good as that one is, I still think I like that tropical prick, uh, boysenberry IPA. That's... That's awesome because it's just so well done. It's not just, you know, an IPA. Neither is it just a boysenberry beer. It really is the perfect middle of the road of both of them. Well, that was great. And I'm glad I got to get all of these out of the way at once. It is a little pricier than just getting a pour of one. But now I know if I'm gonna get a full pour of something, it's not gonna be the Hurricane and it will be the Tropical IPA. So that was really nice. All right, let's move on to the next. So next up we have Wilderness Dogs and Drinks. This says Wilderness Broiler on the outside, but it's got the menu of Wilderness Dogs and Drinks, so whatever. Um, I got the boysenberry sausage on a hoagie with a boysenberry sauerkraut slaw. And because this is for my toddler, I got it all separate and piecemeal. He's not gonna eat the mustard or the slaw, so those are just for me. Let's uh, try them all on their own. That's great. Is that a sauerkraut slaw? Yeah, sauerkraut slaw. That's really nice. Um, I know it would work well with the dog, and I'm, I'm gonna have to cut a little piece off of this and tell him that the elves ate it or something. Um, but like, that's, that's a really good flavor. It's nice and tangy, but that sweetness from the boysenberry, again, doesn't give a whole lot of actual um, boysenberry flavor to it but it does bring some sweetness and some fruitiness, just kind of generic fruitiness, which I like. And I'll try this mustard sauce. Hmm. So it's good, it's similar to the pork loin uh, mustard sauce we just had, but now that I've tasted the regular mustard sauce, I can see how the, the pork loin one was creamy, just by default, like, like by the difference. This is more, more astringent and more uh, vinegar forward, I guess, from this. It's more of like a mustard, the way you would think of a mustard, rather than, um, rather than the creamy one. So let me build my little bite here. Don't tell my son. Hmm. Wow. Man, that hits the spot. They've had the boysenberry sausage here for years, and I usually go for the new stuff because I'm trying to bring you the most, you know, interesting dishes. And I've reviewed the boysenberry sausage for years, so I haven't actually had it in a while because I had done it so much and it's, it's nothing new but it's just such a, such a good sausage. Like, it's sweet. It's a sweet sausage. It's so good. And the smokiness, cooking on the grill and everything, lends itself really well to it. Like, this is just one of my favorite things, and I'm realizing now as we're talking about this, how long it's been since I've actually had the boysenberry sausage or the boysenberry meatballs or the boysenberry wings. All these things that have been around forever, uh, and I haven't had them in, in several years. It's really nice to go back and revisit. This is really, really good. This is one of the better items. I guess that's why they keep it on the menu year after year is because it's just so good you can't get rid of it. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, so next up from Not Wilderness Broiler, uh, Wilderness Dogs, is the beef and chorizo boysenberry chili poutine with cheese curds. So there's somewhere else that the beef and chorizo boysenberry chili 
is available over at the Silver Bullet booth. It comes with boysenberry mashers. And I wanted to try that, but I also wanted to try the poutine just to see how it is. So I figured this is killing two birds with one stone. Let's try this chili. It's fine. It's, it's not really boysenberry. Um, it's just chili. It's not even spectacular chili. It's like the chili you would expect on fries, you know? Um, this may be different from the chili that's served over there, but it says it's the same thing. It's got some heat to it, which is nice, I assume from the chorizo, but um, there's not a lot of boysenberry in it. And with the fries, it's nice. Again, I, you know, I would like a little bit more boysenberry up front. And also, um, this isn't really a poutine. This is chili fries. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I love chili fries, but call it a chili fries. In the same way, this is a beer and not a cat. You have to call it what it is. This is just chili fries. There's no gravy. It's just chili with some little cheese crumbles on top. These aren't curds. They're just shredded mozzarella. Um, and then the chili, and they're they're good for what it is. Like, you know, I would like some more boysenberry, I would like whatever else. But for what it is, it's it's pretty good. It's a it's a decent plate of chili fries. But it's not poutine. But it's fine. Again, because it's on the tasting card, I feel like I'm willing to give it more. Um, more more deference of like, yeah, it's not great, but whatever, because it's kind of like part of the package. And I'm not really thinking about this as I've spent money on this. If I was in the mood for poutine and I went for poutine and I got this, I'd be a little disappointed. But because it's part of the tasting card, I'm just here to try things and enjoy whatever. I'm still having a good time. It's still good chili fries. Um, it's just not as advertised. So, you know. So we're really enjoying the uh, cocktails and beers here at the Wilderness Dance Hall. We decided to go back for some more. This is the Boysenberry Juice Mint and Cucumber Gin Spritzer. This one, this cocktail was available at the uh, preview event, but I opted for the food so I didn't have time to go do every single cocktail. So this is one I heard was really good and you know I'm kind of hit or miss with gin so we'll see how it goes. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. It, it almost tastes like there's watermelon in it. Like it's so refreshing and fruity and light. That is spectacular. Wow. Uh, a lot like the lemonade we had earlier, it's just light and fresh and airy that cucumber really helps to uh, bring it to life that's that's spectacular I would not go for as as you know when given the option of having it for free I went for the uh, the bourbon and the rum and everything else it, gin is not something I would usually go for but this one was fantastic and I see why so many people were talking about it at the event that was great uh, we also got another flight of beers, so here we're going to start from one side to the next. We've got the Brewery X Boysenberry Lager, again, very beautiful uh, orange color, or I'm sorry, red color. Oh man, that's for me. I, you know, I mean, the Hefeweizen, that wheat beer, is still top of my list. That's one of my favorite beers I've ever had. But, I don't know, it's tough to say between this and that tropical one. That tropical IPA was really good. I've still got some here. Mm. Okay, so the tropical IPA is just slightly above this one. But this is really good. They're almost tied for second place. That's great. Um, very fruity, tart, not as hoppy. It's it's a lager, so it's a little more easy drinking. Uh, I could easily put away five or six of those while I'm walking around the park and not even notice it, and then not be able to drive home. Uh, so I'm glad that it's such a tiny cup. 
Next up, we have the boysenberry watermelon seltzer. Uh, again, I don't usually go in for seltzers, and uh, but the, the watermelony flavor that came through with the gin worked well with the boysenberry, so let's see. Um, no, only because it's a little light. Again, I don't go in for seltzers um, because they're so light. I, you know, if I'm going to have an effervescent beverage, my mouth is primed for beer. So going then to something that's lighter like this is just not, not exactly what I'm looking for. It's not bad. And it, that watermelon kind of makes it a little uh, rounder and, and even sweeter than boysenberry would. It's not so much tart as it is just straight sweet. So... Uh, then we've got, oh, the boysenberry shortbread cookie, which I sampled earlier. Yeah, that's the same. It's, it's ale, a little bitter. You saw it earlier in the video. I won't belabor the point. And then lastly, we have the Love Bites Imperial Strawberry and Cacao Stout from the brewery uh, just over here in Orange. They make really dark, intense beers, and this one's only 5.3 ABV, so it's a little bit lighter than I was expecting, but, I mean, chocolate, strawberry, how can you go wrong? Oh, come on. That's great. It's not my favorite on the board, but that's really good. And for as dark as it is and as heavy as it is, the chocolate comes through, the strawberry comes through, there's that certain character that the brewery always has in their beers where it's like that that uh i guess it's just the barrel aging where everything seems very melded together it's very very well balanced and well put together and it feels like one cohesive flavor not that it's a one note song but just that all the flavors work very well like a concert you know it's not a bunch of instruments playing it's a concert that's what this is so they can get as weird and disparate as they want and still make a really good beer because it matures in that cask and makes it better. That's awesome. Okay, well, I think I've finally had enough to drink. Let's go get some food. All right, next stop is the Prop Shop Pizzeria. This is one of the newer eateries uh, that opened, I think, in the last year or so. And they've consistently shown some of the best food in the park. The spaghetti pie from Halloween was just spectacular. So now for the Boysenberry Festival, they've got the Boysenberry Sausage and Hot Honey Pizza with ricotta and basil. Uh, in my life outside of doing YouTube stuff, I work as a photographer and PR rep and we have a pizza with ricotta on it that I initially was like that's going to be a terrible idea turned out to be my favorite pizza I've ever had so uh, I'm already on board for this so I want to I'm going to cut this up a little bit just to get a little bit of each piece into one bite and see how how it goes all right let's give this pizza a shot really good um, again because I'm on the taster card I feel good about it but like if I was paying $14 for a slice of pizza this is kind of small I'm gonna be hungry after this um, so as a piecemeal purchase it's not that much and the flavor is spectacular it's sweet it's smoky from the sausage the ricotta brings like a, a creaminess and that kind of um, I don't know, like a, it's, it's not quite an umami flavor, but it just kind of tastes like home. To like, um, more than just like a mozzarella cheese. It's gonna have a little bit more character to it and a little bit more, almost a tang to it than a regular mozzarella would. So that's a nice choice going into it. I don't get a lot of the hot honey. Like I see it sitting here on the surface, but like it brings some sweetness, but honestly, the, the sweetness of the boysenberry sausage already was enough for me. And then, you know, the, from the tomatoes and everything, I don't necessarily need the hot honey, but it doesn't hurt anything either. So it's no problems with that. But again, it's, it is kind of small. If this is the one slice for $14, I would be a little upset about it. So uh, next up, we have the Caprese Stuffed Portobello with a boysenberry balsamic drizzle. I can already tell this isn't gonna be very boysenberry heavy, which is, you know, 
kind of come to expect it now of like the boysenberry festival has little tiny touches of boysenberry but it's not going to be a whole lot so i'll just accept it for what it is an awesome caprese uh portobello this thing is huge this is you see how big that is that's a big mushroom wow that's great so the boy the um the mushroom is easily the predominant note i mean obviously but it's just a great really well cooked portobello mushrooms. Sometimes they can get a little watery and a little goopy and a little weird if you don't treat them right because there's so much water in the mushroom that it can get a little bit funky if you don't cook it right and like remove the water as it's cooking. But this, for what it is, the, the mushroom is really well cooked and then there's a little bit of, um, you know, garlic and basil and cheese on top. That helps to reinforce it. It's just a great mushroom. It's like a mushroom steak almost. Uh, it's it's so big. It's such a big mushroom. I I just like it's huge and awesome, and it's cheaper than the pizza of the two. I feel like this is a little bit heartier, a little bit more than the pizza is. As good as the pizza is, this seems like you know for two dollars cheaper, I'm getting more from it out of this than I am from that. So. All right, just a couple more stops. Let's keep going. And we're here at Ghost Town Grub for our final entry. This is the mini funnel cake with boysenberry ice cream and powdered sugar. This is exactly as much funnel cake as I think any person needs. All the other funnel cakes that were coming out were just ridiculous. And if I'm just having one for myself, this is really all I need. Let's try this boysenberry ice cream. That's what really brought me over. Um, okay, it's maybe a little bit different than vanilla. Um, yeah, like the, the predominant flavor is that of vanilla. So it's not super duper boysenberry, but it's enough. It's just delicate and nice, you know. Again, I really want to be smacked in the face with a boysenberry, so I really would like more than this, but for what it is, it's not a bad ice cream. Let's try this funnel cake. I think this is just a plain funnel cake with it, so. Mm. Yeah, it's just a plain funnel cake, but it works well with the boysenberry ice cream. And like, you know, if there was anything more fun and more flavored, it would overshadow the boysenberry part of the ice cream. So, it kind of, I guess, helps the the very delicately boysen, uh, delicately boysenberry ice cream to shine through because there's nothing else really getting in its way. All right, well, that was nice. And after all that, we had to come back to where everything began with the classic boysenberry pie. No trip to Knott's is complete without a slice of Mrs. Knott's famous boysenberry pie. That's the reason we're all here today is the boysenberry plant that Walter Knott cultivated and uh, Cordelia using it in her kitchen has made this theme park that we know and love today. So every time I'm here, I have to get a slice of pie. It kind of fell apart as they were cutting it, but uh, this is always my favorite. As, as much fun as everything else is, this is just, come on, it's unfair. It's unfair how good this is. Like nowhere else gets to have as good a dessert as this. Honestly, I think this might be <clears throat> my favorite dessert anywhere. Um, you know, outside of like the favorite things from childhood at a favorite restaurant or something, but like just dollars to donuts, favorite dessert anywhere in the world. This is the perfectly balanced pie. It's amazing. There's a place um, right at the midpoint of Route 66. Um, I think it's called the Halfway Cafe. And they pride themselves on what they call ugly crust pies. And their apple pie, I think, is the closest I've ever had to another 
another pie that like comes to this level, another dessert that comes to this level. But you know, how often am I at the halfway point of Route 66? I'm at knots like four or five times a year, so. This is great. Well, mm. Well, that's everything. Thank you so much for joining us. We've had a really long day here. We've tried all the things across two tasting cards and then even more so. This has been a really fun event. Uh, as I mentioned, these tasting cards, $55, these are a fantastic value and this is definitely the way to go. But any which way you do it, it's a fantastic time with great food and great rides and great merchandise. You're gonna have a great time at the Boys and Berry Festival. Thanks for stopping by.